Good afternoon, and you join me here today on one of the hottest days of the year. And the reason you join me is because we're going to do a range test. You can probably guess by the title of this video. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I've done a winter range test, so probably click up there, I'd imagine, somewhere there, and there'll be a link below as well, to see what I got in the winter. Just driving it normally, not trying to be super slow to eke as much out as possible, just driving it normally. Going to do the same again today but obviously in the hottest day. So it's about 25, 26 when I set off just a second ago to get here, where we've started to film. Um, I reset the counter, so we're gonna count the exact mileage. And I also filmed the temperature, it was 24. It's about 25, 26 now, and it's supposed to hit 28. So it's absolute optimum. Whatever we get today is gonna be the best you're gonna get out of this. The car's talking to me because it's excited to go. Right. So we're in, we are booted up, um, we are showing 9,729. So coincidentally, as well as this range test video, this is also gonna be a 10,000 mile review of the Honda E. The last one I did was at 5,000. So uh, let's get going. And just to introduce to you, it's Mario, who's the cameraman for today, so. Welcome, Mario, to the Honda Re. Hello. You've been in it many times. Um, but kind of thought we might explain that, otherwise we've just got a, like a strange man. Well, you make your own opinions but and judgments, but you just have a man sat with me for no explainable reason. So he's joining me for this ride. When are you getting your EV, Mario, first EV? When I have money. Not getting one then. So I've already done 5.4 miles. You'll be glad to know. Nice. It says I've got 81 miles remaining. One thing I'm not doing is putting the air conditioning on if I can help it because it's a beautiful day. So it's kind of cheating, kind of, but I don't think it consumes that much anyway. I've got an idea for a first stop. McDonald's. Okay. Did you bring your sandwiches? Yeah. So you don't want a McDonald's then? I brought one sandwich so I could have something else. McFlurry. McFlurry? Ice cream. We could have an ice cream and sit out and talk about the car. Yep. In the car park, that's an idea. Well, we will see you at McDonald's, I guess, for a McFlurry, which is Mario's suggestion. It's a week of Mario purchasing food for me, basically, isn't it? Because uh, some of you probably don't know that Mario got married and it's a Bulgarian tradition where they, for the week after, when they return to work, they purchase food no. for their colleagues and so-called friends. I thought it was quite a good tradition. Well, I thought it would be a good opportunity whilst driving in to get a McFlurry to show you the mode I drive in. I was asked that the other day, which, well, which mode do I use to drive or which modes? So I'm in normal mode, so I basically never use the sport mode. All that seems to do is sharpen up the throttle response. I don't seem to change anything else at all. Um, and one thing I found out really late into ownership was you can get a massive speedo readout which is what you can see there 25 we're going currently note also that it tells you what speed limit is um, but what i do is i drive in if i press this button now you'll then see a graphic of the honda e sadly not the same color but you can see the car in front a bit like tesla does now what i do is i've been driving around like well had it since i got it out of the showroom this is how it was well, i didn't realize if you cancelled that out completely it made the dash go big in terms of the readout of speed that's just an interesting side note. I put it in this mode and I track the cars in front. So you can see now it's green. So it's adaptive cruise control essentially, but I use that to do my accelerating and braking for me. And I also turn on lane assist. So now I've got left and right. It only activates it sort of above 45. So you won't see it at the moment going too slow. But basically, I have it on this mode, so I'm not doing any of the accelerating or any of the braking at the moment. It just takes that part of the driving out. Now, of course, that's ma mainly designed for motorways, but I use it all the time. It's incredibly useful. So now it's speeding up. That's just not me. It's, there we go, and you've got the lane tracking as well. Um, so it'll, to turn off, it gets lower now. That, both those modes, the lane tracking and adaptive cruise control, essentially, um, well, that, that's how I drive, predominantly. And you can set the top speed you want it to go. I can also change the distance at which, which it tracks, so following for short interval, 
or I can extend it out, right out to its furthest. And so it'll break off now until this vehicle is past that line. That is the mode I drive at, basically all the time. Uh, just massively easy, like going to Gloucester, real boring, long, long drive in. Uh, straight roads, yeah, doesn't require much input from the driver, um, and that works. Just takes the pain of ex keep braking, accelerating, braking, accelerating, braking, accelerating, all the time. Just takes it out of it completely. So, yeah, there you go. That answers that question. That's what I'm using predominantly is that mode. Hi guys, Thank you. Oh, right, so we got our that's, McFlurries. That's on now. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> restart, yeah. restart. Oh, there we go, McFlurries, got him, so uh, lovely. I ended up paying, which is a bit weird. I presume he's gonna pay me back at some point, uh, due to Bulgarian celebrations. No English. We're off, we just had a McFlurry, very nice, very tasty. So, now off again, it's showing 91, was showing 91 miles of range. Uh, now 90, we got the air conditioning on because it is 29 degrees at the moment. There we go. Well, 10,000 miles, what do I think of this lovely machine? Um, I haven't really changed since the 5,000 mile review, but I will go through some things. It's still a fun car, still really, really love it. I tend to find out I'm actually chewing through tires, so haven't quite hit 10,000. I'm only 250 miles off it. I've replaced the fronts, and when I went there to get the fronts replaced, they replaced them and said, definitely need to replace the backs because they need doing very, 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 very urgently. So he told me, so they're booked in for next week. How has it been going? So all this, no stone chips so far. I did have, as I mentioned before, you can see the previous reviews, a little chip out the front of the bonnet, a bit strange. Not an actual chip, paint flake actually is what it was. Uh, I found the mirrors, which of course are a bit of a design thing going on. These mirrors, not actual mirrors, but cameras. I've not had any issues with those at all at night time, in the rain. Occasionally you'll get a blob on the lens, but once you wipe that off, it can be a month or two until it happens again. It's like pretty of a non-issue, but you can actually have them, so the a rain blob will stick to it. So it's not completely impervious to it, but it's absolutely fine. So nothing's really changed apart from my 5,000 mile review, um, except to say that extra driving features that I use, which I hadn't mentioned before really, those are incredibly useful. It's like, you can either have a load of fun in it by turning off all the safety features, or you can relax and have all those safety features switched on and just a much more relaxing drive, basically. So the lane assist, when it keeps you in lane, it only works at something like five degrees of a turn. So it's not Tesla-esque at all. Straight roads, it worked really, really well. Uh, winding roads, it keeps constantly turning on and off, so. Yeah, not that good from that point of view, but if you're just on long straight roads, it works flawlessly. The other thing that is a bit of a problem is the emergency brake-in, so it does obstacle avoidance. Now that, if you, we've had it before, where you've got a branch that's sticking out slightly, and it'll slam the brakes on really, really sharp. It's like neck jarring sharp. Um, because it thinks there's gonna be an obstacle you're gonna crash into. Now that's kind of good, because you don't crash into obstacles. In fact, I had it once. If you come around here, you might see it. Can't, I'm not even sure you can see the mark. Which side is it? I actually had it where it slammed the brakes on. Yeah, you can, just here, just. It slammed the brakes on, said you're gonna hit something. And I was looking in the mirrors and stuff like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna hit anything. So I slowly crept backwards and actually I was pushing against a corrugated bin. And I've got a slight mark here, which had just come out, but. So it does work but sometimes it can work when you don't want it to. It slams like, for instance, I find I'm pulling into a parking space and there's a pillar there and I'm too, I'm going a little bit too fast. It thinks I'm gonna crash into it to what it deems too fast. Well, that's just driving like I have done for all these years. And it's like, it's not too fast, but it slams the brakes on it and it does actually hurt your neck. 
that's the only thing I would say. It's one of the, you can turn that safety feature off if you want, but when you boot the car up and run it, all these safety features come back on, so you can't have it permanently off, which is a bit of a shame. So that needs needs noting. Uh, everything else, the boot space and stuff, I found absolutely fine. In fact, at the moment, I've got a. You know, if you went to speedyfeet.co.uk, you would see I've got a Gotway Monster Gen 3 in there, which will give me a 50 mile commute. With electric cars, you've always got to keep these in the boot because, you know, the press tell you all the time you're going to be running out left, right and centre, so you need to carry one of these. Not true. Although, it's worth noting that something like this, if, it, if this one doesn't, but there's a model of this one, same size, 2,400 watt hours. Be quite good if you just plug that into the car as a range extender. But anyway, we're carrying that today, even though we're doing the range test, so that's 25 kilograms extra we wouldn't usually be carrying. That only just fits into the boot, to be fair. But I've not carried a dog in here, so the Husky and stuff, Brucey, he's not been coming with me. These, I've mentioned these before in a 5,000 mile review. Hasn't been raining, of course, because the weather's been a lot better. I have not had an issue with these tools when it hasn't been raining. What I have found is when it's raining, you could, it didn't just do what it just did then, which is drop the window down and unlock. Sometimes you're like, come on, and it won't do it, and it locks back up. Like that, there we are. Um, so, them popping out and stuff. The only annoying thing is when you're in close proximity, so if, if I lock this and I walk away, let me say, if I go this far away from the car, I think it takes a little while to reset, so we'll see what happens here. But basically, if I come close to the car, that door will pop out, most likely. I don't know if it will now, because it, sometimes it takes 10 minutes or whatever to reset. No, it's not going to. Oh, there we go. So when you're near the car, it unlocks, which you'd want. But when the car's parked here, and when your kitchen door is here, and you're here getting a cup of tea inside the house, late at night, the front lights come on, and the doors pop open. Now it's not unlocked. This isn't unlocked. As someone pointed out to me, this is not actually unlocked now, so you can't unlock the back. So it's locked, but it doesn't need to be me that's actually unlocking this. Anyone can grab it and unlock the car, which is a bit of a major problem if you're inside your house not realizing it's unlocked. For me, it's not really an issue because it's on a private drive. But if this was parked outside your house, say, and you were in a public environment, people would see these pop open and you're actually sat here. And when it does more than that, there's a little light in here, which is really handy at night, that actually shows you that it's open. All those things are great if you own it, but if you don't realize it's done that, anyone walking along as a bit of an opportunist would go, oh wow, it's lit up as well. I know exactly where to open it. And they can open it and they can access your vehicle and take things out. Now they can't drive it off or anything. There's nothing they can do about that. But if you've got stuff in here, like a two and a half grand wheel in the back, that's gone. Once you open that, you see, those open. So you've got access to the full car. And once it's open, it doesn't lock again either. So it'll be open all night unless you realize. With the lights, if you want to see this, come around the front here, you will see. So now the lights are off. And what I'll do is I'll walk close to the car again and you'll see. Now these are all brilliant features if it was an innocent world, basically. It would be amazing. And it's fine for me because it's on a private road. If it's in a garage, it's not going to be an issue. But when I walk, hopefully it'll do. I don't know if there's a timeout or not, but there we go. Have those come on? They have, yeah. So they do a lovely little animation, which is pretty cool. But then that's on at night time. Doesn't look a lot in the day, but at night time, super bright. You've got that shining and you've got the door handle shining as well, saying, look at me, everybody. That's going on, basically. So it's worth keeping in mind. In terms of usability, it's amazing. When you come out and it's pitch black, you can't see anything, these lovely lights animate and they come on and they light your way and you can make your way around the car in pitch black and see exactly what you're doing. From that point of view, spot on. Really, really good. Can't fault it. In terms of people to access your car, that's a shame. Key fob, I can lock the car and these courtesy lights will stay on if you set them up to. So same with both those. When you come close with a key, you can set that up from within the menu in the car. Press and holding will open up that. One really good thing to mention about this is you can set up two sets of charging timers. And I've mentioned this before, but actually its usability is great. We're on a, a tariff now where it's, so we've got an economy seven meter. We charge at two o'clock in the morning, or well, this car charges at two o'clock in the morning to six o'clock. That is 5p per kilowatt hour, ridiculously cheap. So three times cheaper than in the day. That's brilliant, so that comes on. If 
that's set up on that schedule. Now with our ENV200, you set that schedule up and it stays like that. This one recognizes using GPS where you are. So you say at home, charge between two and six. But if I come out and I pop to Tesco's and do shopping, I don't have to faff about with my schedule or turn it on or off. It knows I'm not at home because there's no second schedule set up. When I'm at away, it's set as away, it will just charge. You plug in at Tesco's, it starts charging. That is brilliant, having two sets. You can say you can have two schedules if you want, home and home, or you can have home and you can have away charging, or you can just have home and just let it charge always, basically, whenever you go out. So from that point of view, that's brilliant. If you've got a charge schedule set up on both those and you actually do want to charge, you don't need to go in there and start messing around the settings. What you can do is you can unlock like I just did and then press and hold the key fob for I think it's five seconds, four seconds. You press and hold it, it will override the charge and start charging straight away. Brilliant, from that point of view. Um, you can lock the car, you can unlock it by pressing that button and then press and hold and then all the windows open with the key fob. If you've, if, say if it was the hottest day of the year so far, <clears throat> like today, and you turn up here and you've had all the windows open and you haven't had the air con on because you don't want to run out of battery, but you've locked the car and you're like, oh flip, but I go off up here so I've I lock the car as I leave, I lock the car, and I'm like, oh, I've left the windows open. I press and hold, I press and hold, hopefully it's a work, here we go. And then all the windows go up. Not unique to the Honda E, but it's a good feature I thought I'd mention nonetheless. So you don't have to be near the car, it's remote controlled, etc., etc. And there you go, there's those doors popping out again. So, yeah. But actually, because we're filming, I'm gonna unlock the car press and hold and wind the windows down so it doesn't get boiling hot in that vehicle. Uh, in terms of usability, so we're going to find out what the summer range is right now. So, well not right now, but uh, today we're going to find out, see what it actually is. So it's about, I think it was about 85, I think in winter, let's say link below. We're going to see what it is in summer, but in usability in terms of range, but practicality, there's only a four seater. Bit of a shame if you've got six, family of six. Uh, but space in the back is actually really spacious for the size of the car it is. So the kids have had no complaints. Adults have had no complaints and it's a real comfortable place to be. So you've got the bench seat across the back, really, really comfortable. You've got no tunnel and you've got no tunnel at the front either. It's completely flat across the front and back. It's just a really spacious place to be. Uh, kids love it. You've got amazing mood lighting in there. You've got the glass roof, which you can slide open or close with the little blind. Um, that works really, really well. Sound deadening is fine. Everything's really sweet about this car. Really, really nice. If you've got to carry five people around, this, this car is uh, right off straight away. If you've got a list of electric cars you want, if you're not looking for something that's fun, this is almost like a weekender car. If you're having a kit car in your garage, it's the sort of thing you'd take out to have a blast in. Nonetheless, I do use it to commute. I use my Renault Zoe more because I'm carrying Bruce around. I do use this and it just, I say, I've done 10,000 miles on it. It just puts a smile on my face every time I drive this thing. It's just epic fun. One thing to mention, on the dashboard, I got a bit of a creak coming. Now, the problem with this, I had it in the Nissan Leaf and I've got it in Missouri as well. After you've done some miles, things start to move about a bit in terms of they flex out, especially if it's boiling hot weather and it's bearing down on the dash. What you'll find is creaks start happening. Now, in a petrol car, wouldn't be a problem. In an electric car, a bit of an issue because it's so quiet that you start hearing every single creak. So, yeah. But otherwise, it's performed flawlessly. There is a recall for, I think it's our seatbelt warning uh, system, as in not having your seatbelt on. Mine works flawlessly, but there was a recall to redo the software for it. So sometimes, apparently, that alarm wouldn't go off if you hadn't put your seatbelt on. I haven't bothered taking it back yet. I've got the letter for it, but not done anything with it, so. Uh, automatic wipers, fine. I've already mentioned automatic headlights in the previous review, but again, you cannot trust them 100%. Sometimes you'll be following someone, they're just a bit too far away, and it flashes the lights, and it sees them, and it flashes them down again. It looks just like you flashed the car in front. Um, that can happen coming the other way as well with head-on traffic, so. But I do utilize that, but I'm always hovering over that switch just to make sure that I haven't, I'm not going high beam and blinding people, so. Um, yeah, let's carry on with this range test. That's pretty much summarizes what I wanted to say at the 10,000 mile mark. So again, as always, if you've got any questions, just comment and then we can answer them. But otherwise, we're gonna get off now and actually try and finish this off and see how far it will go and report back for you.
<sighs> well, it has been a really long day. No Mario now, he's gone home. I have done, now, I have done 68.4 miles. We're at 36% battery. Says 39 miles range remaining. So we're gonna be hitting 110 miles. All things being equal, let's say 100. Um, right, gotta continue on now. It's 26 degrees and it is 20 past six in the evening. So it has been a heat wave, that's official. Some cool air in. We have had the air condition on. I did say earlier we would try not to have it on. We have been using it, probably been on for 40 miles. Right, pick up one of my boys now on part of this range test. Doing a range test Are on we? a Honda. Oh. Well, I have been, done 72 Honda points. personal assistant does not have a data connection. Please try again in an area with better reception. No idea why it's saying that. I've never ever had that before. Caught on camera. Never ever had that. So are you gonna see how many miles it last? Yeah, because it's the hottest day in it of the year, I think, or close to it. Oh yeah. Super hot. Still 24 degrees and it's 6.32. So where are we going now? Just to run the battery down, we're on 30%. Well, we are basically 92 just hit 92 miles with seven miles range remaining with seven percent remaining that's what it's giving out on the old dashboard so hopefully we are now heading towards a rapid charger at a littles which is about three miles away hopefully we'll get there fine and it'll work otherwise we're gonna have a problem so a bit of a status update. We have got six miles at 6%. And we are just taking a look now at the, basically the pod point charger in Lidl's, just to make sure, it's in Lidl's, just to make sure it's actually working and it appears to be. So we will now risk moving on to see if we can run this car down to zero. Wait, what? I, thought we were, I thought we were charging it. No, we're gonna just check the charger's working before we do something very, very silly, which is to now run out the car. How about that? One thing I do want to mention whilst I'm here is the lane assist or lane departure, should I say, warning system is really annoying around rural roads. And all you can do is each time you get in the car, turn it off. If you don't want to keep saying, whoa, you're going off the road when you're not. And it sort of tugs at the steering wheel slightly, even when you're not actually, you know, there's zero chance you're going off the road. It just thinks you are. So it's a little bit frustrating in all fairness. So, yeah. That is it. We are turning around. We got scared now. Now we're in scared territory. Let's have a little look what we got. 3%, 3 miles. Jake has done the math, he says. Done the math. I took away <laughs> and seven and four. We are heading back out, back towards that charger. It's a lovely quiet evening. Let's do it. Off we go again. Two miles. Low charge, power reduced. Low charge, power reduced. Okay, keep on filming this, Jacob. We got reduced power now, allegedly. Two miles remaining, it reckons. That's what it reckons. Uh-oh. <laughs> so we're putting power back in now, which is good. I've got the butterflies now. Like the adrenaline butterflies nervous nervousness that goes on so we're still at two percent but we have got low reduced charge but we've done 97.9 miles so it does a hundred miles basically how much power has it got if i slam a foot it's still got loads it says reduced power it's got loads of power feels quite 
nippy still, so still feels nippy. Everyone watching this be like, I do not have butterflies in my stomach, but we do. Well, not too bad now, because I know we're right next to the charger, so it's only when you're about four miles away, you're like, hmm. So we have officially hit 100 miles with 1% remaining. In fact, I think we'll say we're cool, that quits. We got 1% left. Who wants to go more than 1% left in their battery? Not many people. So we'll just go to the charger now. Well, there you go. So to charge from naught, well, 1%, it's saying got a charge time of one hour and 20 minutes. 100 miles, summer charge, there you go. We're gonna charge to 10% and head off. So I hope this has been very, very helpful for you, this video. You now know the winter range, and now you know the summer range. I've been wanting to do it all summer. Today happened to be a heat wave. We've got rain tomorrow. It's been really, really hot. Um, so it's the perfect day to do it. 100 miles is what you're gonna get from this car. I've not driven it around really, really slowly, just driven it completely normally. A bit of mix of air con and not. Um, but also bear, worth bearing in mind, I've got a 25 kilogram wheel in the car, plus Mario, plus camera equipment. So we reckon when we worked it out about 110 kilogram more than we usually had. Um, so yeah, that's worth keeping an eye on as well, is that we're actually carrying more weight than I did in the winter range test, so. Yeah. It's, fast. it's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's Done a range test on it. So we've been all over Malvern, oh. uh, went to Minchin Hampton. I've got to get electric car. Yeah, we went everywhere. And we, when I did the winter range test, I ended up here as well. Because yeah. it's a rapid. It's the only rapid around, really. <laughs>